We say good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. This is the Donovan and Rosedale United Methodist Parish in Central Nebraska. And it is our hope and mission statement that our service will bring blessings to you and your household. We open up the 89th Psalm looking at the first eight verses. This talks about God's covenant with David. I will sing of your steadfast love forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonder, wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and awesome, above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time for some movie trivia. Can anybody remember what movie goes with the everlasting gobstopper? If you're about to say Willy Wonka, that is right. Yes, it is the 50th anniversary of the first Willy Wonka movie, the Gene Wilder version. Of course, this is a worship service, not a movie review. But let me explain why I am thinking of Willy Wonka. I am thinking of Willy Wonka because of his invention of that everlasting gobstopper. That was the candy that never lost its flavor. Unlike chewing gum, it kept its taste, period. It is the everlasting gobstopper. That ties in with our scripture today. The everlasting gobstopper can remind us of something else that is everlasting. God's love is everlasting. Psalm 89 says steadfast love. Psalm 89 says God's love is established forever. Is that what it says in the Hebrew? Are you sure it says everlasting? Yes, it most certainly does. The word steadfast is translated from the root om. Om means eon. Eon means ages, eternal ages, a long, long time. The word love is translated from the word chesed. Chesed may be translated as kindness, mercy, or love. In this context, it means love. There we have it, steadfast love. Love that lasts through the eons. This is reinforced in verse 2 with the word aulam, which is very similar to om. This is translated as forever. God's love lasts for eons and forever. It is nice to have an everlasting gobstopper never lose its flavor. It is awesome to have the everlasting God never lose his love for us. God's perspective is forever. Psalm 89 talks about God's forever relationship with King David's throne. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. This implies that God will keep a son of David on the throne of Israel forever. But some of us may be saying, wait a minute, Israel does not have a king anymore. Four different times, foreign kings defiled the Jewish temple and deposed the king. The Assyrians did it in 721 BC. The Babylonians did it in 587 BC. The Greeks did it in 168 BC. And the Romans took their turn in 70 AD. So what about God's promise to keep a forever throne for David's descendants? Has God failed on a promise? Yes and no. Yes, the earthly line of King David has been disrupted. The throne of Israel has no grandson of King David upon it. Israel has no kings anymore. Israel has a prime minister and a president, but no king. And we do not know if either one of those positions is filled by a son of David. The earthly line of David on the throne is no more, 
but there is the spiritual line. The spiritual line of King David is alive and well in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the 43rd great-grandson of King David. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is clearly a descendant of David. The line of David did not die with Jesus. The spiritual throne of God given to David is forever. When Jesus became the Lord of life, the throne of David became permanent. On Easter Sunday, the throne of David became the eternal throne. God kept the promise to establish the throne forever. This gives another answer to the Psalm 89 question, who can compare with God? Can the gods of all the other nations compare with the God of Israel? No, they cannot guarantee steadfast love. Can the earthly kings compare to the God of Israel? No, they are human beings. Their time will run out. Even if they got a peacemaker, excuse me, a pacemaker with energizer batteries, their time will end. Whereas God has no need of batteries. God just keeps going and going. Now, all of this forever talk gets pretty abstract. It is hard for the finite human mind to grasp the infinite God. When something is pretty abstract, it is helpful to have a symbol. Fortunately for Christians, there are several symbols of the infinite. One of them is the mathematical symbol for infinity. Some call it the lazy eight. Some call it the sideways eight. The scholar who invented the infinity symbol was John Wallace, who wrote it down in 1655. This seems nice enough, but now let us look at a coincidence. Long before Mr. Wallace chose the lazy eight for infinity, the early Christians chose the symbol of the fish. Notice how the Christian fish symbol is on its side. If we round out the tail of the Christian fish, we can see infinity. The moral of our story is nothing compares with God's eternal love. The infinity symbol is a nice reminder of earthly infinity. But the Christian fish reminds us of Jesus' divinity, his infinity. When it comes to lifespan, when it comes to love, nothing compares to God. God's love outlasts them all. Amen. Here's the picture that I hope is worth a thousand words. See the infinity symbol? You see how the Jesus fish symbol, if we, if we took a marker and could write upon here, we could round out the fish's tail and turn that into the sideways eight or the infinity symbol. That's the point that I'm wanting to illustrate.